countdown. Four, three. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Integrated Hour. I am here with my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on, brother? Happy New Year. Hey, dog. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, all the things. Yep. Glad it's over. Me too. I'm glad it's over. You know, on everyone talks. Yeah. What were you saying? Got to get him ready for 24 to be like halfway done. I yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. And here, here's what I noticed. Separation season. Everyone talks about separation season. But what I will say is the week before Christmas and the week between Christmas and New Year's, I have never seen more people hop on my calendar and not show up to a call. Ever. It was insane. And then you wonder why they're in the position they're in. Yeah. And you can just see. Yeah, a you know? few years back, I quit putting people on my calendar <clears throat> because of that. Just inevitably, yeah. three weeks before Christmas, it makes sense. Man, everyone's slow. We'll be slow. And then Aunt Peggy and Tom are in town, and your grandma and grandpa are over. And you're like, shit, I mm-hmm. can't fucking meet with anybody right now. So people just basically walk and don't meet with you. But you're at the office. I'm at the office. So yeah. I transitioned that two-week period into full-fledged annual planning. Like, That's I awesome. knock out all of it in that two weeks because I'm not bugged. No one needs me. And it works. But, yeah, it's nothing worse than having a full week on your schedule that you don't make plans yourself yep. for doing things. And then people shit on your desk. It's like, well, mm-hmm. you should sit it's, them all to do. I actually think it's one of the most disrespectful things that you could do. Yeah. I'd rather you spit in my face than no show me. <laughs> like, Maybe. <for> real. <laughs> One's a lot more dangerous than the other. Well, I beat COVID, I think. I never got tested, but I think I beat it, so I think we're good there. There you go. <laughs> we just lost well, half of our viewers, by the way, on that sentence alone. No one's going to come back in <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So what I, what I think we should do, everyone talks about goals, goal setting, but there's so much more to it because how many people, I would say the majority of people, plan out their year try to execute and somewhere, somehow, there's always shit that comes up and they don't get it done. They're not even close. And so instead of focusing on actually how to set goals, meaning make your big goals and then reverse engineer it, start from the end and then break it down into little tasks. I wanna I want to talk about some of the things that are ancillary, but are just as important, if not more important, to have people hit their goals, yeah. All right? So, Let's talk about what it takes, okay? The first thing is mindset, all right? You can't be married to any plan. You have to be married to the outcome, right? The plan might change along the way. Yeah. So how are you, how are you willing to adjust and how committed to you to what you put down on paper, right? How committed are you? to carry that through and make sure that you achieve that. Yeah. And what goes into that, right? It's what you put in your mind. Okay. Think about it like this. If you have a revenue number, okay. And you guys are great at sales, but terrible at marketing. Well, what do you need to do to make sure you hit that revenue number? I'd be reading books, listening to podcasts or consuming content on how to market better this way. That's the missing link. That's the missing piece to you hitting your sales number, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then think about, yeah, I mean, anything that you are weak on. Like I I learned a long time ago. I knew I was really bad at copy, right? There's an art form to making a great social media post. There's an art form to mass emails. There's an art form to all written copy. So all I did was that whole year consume books on copy. Well, guess what? Copy isn't a problem anymore, right? It allowed me to hit my goals that year and and forward. Why? Because I invested in skills and knowledge and development over hiring an outside agency. Yeah. Yeah. I think here's a problem with annual goal setting. I think a lot of people get so wrapped around like the attractive, sexy thing of like, oh, I did 3 million revenue this year. Next year, I'm going to do 8 million. It's like, well, where the hell is $5 million coming from? 
right? How How is that a, a target? What did you base that off of? And how the fuck are you going to get there? Yep. A lot of people don't understand, like, when we're working with some of our clients and we're helping them set up their goals, it's like, what have you put in place so far to hit the goal that you hit this year? Was it a goal or did you just kind of casually act in a way that got you here? So yeah. my opinion on this goal side is like, we got to figure out what you did last year and what sucked and what you mm -hmm. were terrible at and how to make that better to then establish, can we make a goal of 20% revenue increase 30% or whatever the number arbitrarily may be to your point earlier, there's a thousand other things that are more important than your revenue goal. If your ass ain't alive at the end of the year, then revenue don't fucking matter. Right? No what, are you, what are you doing to stop putting bonbons and t uh, Tito's vodka down your throat? Like, let's start with your household. Let's get your house in order first. Yeah. And then let's see what your what happens organically because of that in your business. Exactly. Right? So I'm, I've never been a heavy drinker. This year, I'm not drinking. I just quit, yeah. I'm going to quit drinking. There's no point in having empty calories of a social drink, right? Yeah. Or sitting around a campfire and having eight beers with your buddies just to feel like dog shit the next day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but 41, a hangover at 40 lasts a week and a half. It ain't just a daily thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I drink on Friday night. We have a great time. Saturday, I feel like shit. Sunday, mm -hmm. I'm getting a little better. Monday through Friday, I'm foggy. And then yeah. what do you do? You drink again Friday night. And it's this constant evolution of brain cloud and fog. You mm -hmm. cannot, I will fight you to the death. You can't argue that you are operating at full capacity. No. You're in that state. Right? You can't mm -hmm. tell me that you're operating at full capacity when all you do is eat Taco Bell and fucking McDonald's and shit all the time. And yep. you're 70 pounds overweight and you get out of breath walking up three fucking stairs to your house. So when I tell people, everyone wants to go to that revenue number. Yep. That revenue number means nothing. No. It, Listen, it's nothing. the bottom line, would you rather have a company that does 20 million in revenue, right? But had expenses of, let's say, 19.7 million, or would you rather have a company that does 5 million? with all in expenses of 4 million, right? It's one, what are you netting? Two, what is the amount of time, effort, energy, and stress to net that? And then to your point, the only way that you're going to get there, and everyone is so concerned about that revenue number, is to make sure that everything else in your life aligns, okay? I went, I took Saturday and Sunday, I took my youngest to the Rangers lightning game. And then the next day I took my oldest to the Tampa game. Okay. Uh, I think it was like a football bucks versus whoever. And the only reason why I bring this up is as you look around when you're out in public and I don't like to do that too much because geez, I mean, fuck people are out of their mind. Everybody I saw was grossly overweight, grossly overweight. And I would actually put that number on like a, a 70% number out in public. And that was the only thing. Like I'm watching the game. I'm looking around. I'm like, how is this? So the people that do that, you don't have, if you're overweight, okay? And I'm not picking on fat people, right? We're not doing that here. I'm just saying if you're overweight or you're eating like shit, how are you going to have the energy, right, throughout today to to do what's required in your business to actually thrive and what happens if because you're overweight or because you eat like shit you have a health problem then you, you all your goals are out the window you basically will wipe out your business or wash away that year and now you're playing catch up yeah yeah well and 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 so i think the way to avoid that fallout is to focus. And, and that's what we tell everybody. Like, I want you to focus on what's inside the four walls of your house and goals and aspirations. And, and what are your milestones there first? Because mm -hmm. if you don't have excitement and you don't have a place you can go to that makes you happy, 
i.e. your house, and you're not around your family having fun and doing fun things, how are you showing up to work? How are you showing up as the CEO of your company where you have employees? They know you're miserable. You're probably stressed 24 seven. You sleep like shit mm-hmm. because you're stressed. You're not exercising because you don't have time. You're fatigued and burnout. You're making shitty ethical decisions. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on until we have the violent blow up and plane crash, right? So to kind of get people thinking across a better and more logistical concept of of goal planning, let's change you first. What do we need for you? Is it your diet or do you need to give up smoking cigarettes or smoking weed because you can't sleep at night? You hit the pin and you go night night. Is it is it coming? Does that pin now come to work with you during the day because, well, shit, I can't sleep at night and I fucking sure as hell can't deal with work today. I'm going to hit the pin during the day, too, because it's your escape. We got to find your emotional imbalance and what you're holding yourself to as the hook and get you Mm -hmm. off of that first. You can't invest in employees and avoid investing in yourself. Okay, because what's going to happen is when you die and your employees go find another job, it's pointless for everyone. Yeah. So getting yourself in the right, just create some kind of daily activity. Get up an hour earlier. Maybe start there. It doesn't have to be this big Band-Aid ripoff where you're like, I can't have any more white bread and I'm not having any sugar and I'm going to eat salad and I'm getting up at 2.30 and I'm going to run every morning. How about you just wake up 30 minutes earlier every day and then spend that 30 minutes alone? What do I want to accomplish as as me today? Not my business, not as dad, not as husband, not as CEO. What What does Keith want to accomplish today to make Keith happy? When you start to do that, then you need to figure out what does your perfect day look like? Do you get up at five and hang out in the shower for 45 minutes and scroll Facebook and then go eat breakfast and then spend time with your kids and then hit the gym? Like whatever that is, spend the first couple hours of your day doing what you enjoy doing. The chemical change in your attitude just by starting your day doing something you enjoy will fucking carry you through the day, even through all the shit you don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's insane. And so like I speak on this now because I two, maybe two years ago, I kind of incorporated that. Yeah. I had a routine, but it was just a routine, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever left your house to drive somewhere? And when you get to that location, you're like, how the fuck did I get here? Yes. All the time. Because you check out mentally and your body is just acting because Mm -hmm. the body knows where you want to go, but you don't necessarily have to be in tune to get there. Yeah, that shit happens on a daily basis when you're just doing the monotony of doing things. And a lot of CEOs and entrepreneurs get into that space of like, they wake up at five o'clock, they put their right foot on the ground, their left foot on the ground, they grab their pants, they put them on, they grab breakfast and they're out the door. But there's no fucking wavelengths and communication happening. It's just an action that we've used to do for 25 years. So we continue doing If you change that and you inject brain stimulating activity, intent, get in the cold plunge. That'll fucking wake you up. That'll make you think, right? Yeah. Go to the gym. First thing you do, like find what it is that gives you that, man, I'm really feeling good about today to then get to the office in a much different attitude to, to schedule your day out. That's where people need to start. The revenue will come as a byproduct of how you show up at work. It doesn't necessarily need to be this. I need to hire 12 new sales guys and three new sales managers and another CMO and another COO. That Mm -hmm. will come as a byproduct of activity. None of that shit's going to change unless you change your day and how you set yourself up to win the day. So that's where we start. Because if you don't change that, the business don't matter. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can make more money, but it's just going to buy you another 12 pack and another hamburger. Who gives a fuck? Correct. Right? It's not going to really do anything impactful. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, of course it does. If you're not, basically you're saying you got to be in line and actually have intent before you go about and get into the office, right? Do something that's going to wake you up, stimulate you and give you that energy to drive through the day. 
Yeah. You know, I'll tell you this too. And people, this is one of the hardest, hardest things to nail down. So if, if you struggle with this, you're definitely not alone, but how much support do you have at home? Do you communicate to your wife and kids why you're working 60 hours, 70 hours a week? Do they know? Are they behind you? Or do they resent? Okay. I will tell you, I have been beyond blessed with my wife because she understands and she's bought into what legacy me and her are trying to build. And she knows her role in it. Yeah, that's important. Okay. And like this weekend, it's we're doing it a little late, but there's a reason for that. I sit down with my wife, my kids, we make them individual goals, and then we make family goals you know, on top of all the business stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because I want to set them on the path. I want to teach them the habits that will allow them to be successful. Dude, that right? so what, happened. Happened? what happened? People don't do that. People I, don't do that. I don't want yeah. I ask people all the time, like, when's the last time you and your wife sat at a table and put a vision board together, your own vision boards? Mm-hmm. And then swap them. How, how do you know what your wife wants to do? Like, no my shit. wife doesn't work, right? She she doesn't have a job outside of the house, but she busts her ass all day long, keeping shit straight and doing things at home with the kids. Yep. If I don't communicate with her and I don't understand her goals and we're not having that whiteboard vision together, mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about that shit ever because no. I'm not putting it on my radar to pay attention. And if you don't do that, uh, I will introduce you to a divorce attorney because you will need one. A hundred percent. You will need one. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's no different than doing that. Have you ever done that with your vice president or, or like your number two in charge of your company? I ask people that all the time. I'm like, what, what, what's your passion? Like you're having trouble getting this employee to do certain things. What's their vision board say? Because you can find something on their vision board to keep them enticed to work harder for you and your business and for the people in your company. But if you don't know what their visions are, then you're shit out of luck. Yeah. If you don't know what your own visions are, how the fuck are you going to have a better year? Right? I mean, how do you Dude, I'm, I'm, la- I'm laughing because I see all the shit people post and I know that they don't have that. No. I know. Dude, and, I, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect. It, I'm 41 and been in business 17 years, and I didn't start doing this until like a few years ago. But here's the I'm big thing. When I started doing it, my revenue went through the roof. Yep. When I started doing it, I had more money than I ever dreamed I would ever have. I was a police officer. I was in the military, and then I was a police officer. There is no vision other than yeah. I hope I make it home tonight. Hope I don't get shot pulling some asshole over. Right? Hope I don't get shot on the search warrant. There's yep. no vision to that other than making it home. Like you ask any police officer, like, what's your vision for the day? What's your hope? I just hope I make it home. Yeah. And guess what? That is the fucking end zone of your daily vision. Because as soon as you make yep. it home, I hit my goal. Now I can do nothing. It's the same concept with this. Like, what is your vision as an owner of the company? It can't be revenue generically driven. That is yep. not impactful and motivating at all. Money has to have, no. like, to your point earlier, I don't give a shit if you hit 8 million, but if you spent 7.99 million, you're broke. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, you hit your goal and you're bankrupt. For what? Yeah. Right? So the money thing comes as a byproduct of the vision that you do on the personal side of the world and then the vision that you do within your organization on how else you can help your team hit their vision. And that yeah. was the big paradigm shift for me. If I can create... If David on my team wants to go on four family trips this year, well, guess what I'm going to hold over his head as the carrot? Hey, instead of giving you a stupid bonus, man, I'm going to send your family to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Let's hit these goals. Boom. Done. Because that's important to him. Right? No. That doesn't require any planning for me. I just need to be in tune with what his vision and goals are. So a lot of people, I think, make this whole big EOS is, I love EOS. I think it's great, but I also think it's mm-hmm. the most trendiest thing in the world that's happened since Traction came out, right? I think everyone yes. wants an L10 meeting. Everyone wants to say that they implemented EOS. Why? What is the goal? Most people yeah. just want to say that they implemented EOS. Also, is that, 
That's crazy to me. I mean, it is crazy. a little different than a lot of people. You know that. Uh, I, also, I, you know, I, I think that where was EOS three years ago? I'm not sure when I read traction. I will say I implemented it in the last year on the recommendation of my right hand person. So we can accomplish more projects because we were, we were falling behind on real critical tasks that weren't going to pay us today, but they were going to allow us to grow exponentially. And that's why I implemented it. And I will tell you, it has helped dramatically. It works. No doubt about it. Yeah. But the reality is it, 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 it was a new thing. It was a trend and it's mm -hmm. implementing and, and people are going to use it forever now because it's part of, of business planning. Yep. The reality is this, in my opinion, and I, you know, I have shitty opinions, whatever. I don't know about that. If you don't clean your household first, then the business doesn't matter. And if you can't implement planning and strategy and understanding what your household needs and wants to include your children, the rest of the shit that you do during the day is an empty activity. Yep. Yes, it generates money. Yes, money is what your family needs to fuel their activities. But if you're gone eight, nine, ten hours a day just working, your kids are not going to know anything about that. They're just going to think dad's too busy for us. Yep. That shit sucks, right? It does. So that's something that I had to recreate and restructure. But to, to the point of like, if you just start with your household first and don't get overzealous and try to create this whole business SWOT analysis and figuring out all that right now, yep. figure you out first. If you can figure you out, then the business planning will be a drastically different than it would have been if you were 200 pounds overweight and B <laughs> revenue targets will be way higher that you set than you would have when you were lazy. Yeah. Right? So you're, you're, postponing the business plan a little bit to get the self plan in order to recreate a better business plan. Mm -hmm. I love right. it. And to your point, the consumption of books and, and all the literature, like instead of listening to Tupac on your Apple radio, listen to some damn, I don't give a shit, anything, podcasts, yeah. books, whatever, but it needs to be something that is helping you push that needle to the right location of where you're headed. Absolutely. A hundred percent. One thing I will add to that, which I've, this is something recent I've done. I would say in the last two years, I've always donated. And I know like, how does donation help you hit your goals, right? There's something about doing something for people that can really never repay you, nor do you want or expect that to happen yeah. but there's something about supporting other people and knowing that you did a good thing that you put you intentionally have good karma and i have made a couple goals the last last year about that supporting certain organizations yeah. there's a food bank that's local in tampa that was one of them and then there were some other organizations uh that our goal was to support them. And I will tell you that that helped rally the team around that. And everyone felt better knowing that when we had our production and we were hitting goals, the byproduct of that was helping people that really needed it, right? And the other part of this that I, I want to include and wrap up, short-term thinking versus long-term thinking. All right. It, your intent matters. The and not just the intent with your goals, the intent with your actions, how you treat people, how you serve your clients, how you treat your family. The the more you treat everyone else, how you want to be treated. Right. The more good energy that you put out. And I'm not saying this is like a fucking foo foo thing or meditate for 30 minutes. Sounds foo foo, bro. Sounds real foo foo. Yeah, I know. But you'd be surprised if you just try to and focus on making yourself a better person to other people. Holy shit, the amount of reciprocation that you get when you do right by others is is you can't really quantify it, 
right? It's, it's actually probably the only thing that's helped drive my business, right? Just will and trying to do the right thing and having the right intent by people. And so I, I, I have just, zero money that goes into marketing every year because of that. I know that. I do not spend any money marketing. And the reason why is because I'm forever giving shit away for free, mm -hmm. period. So yeah. the more you give, the more you gain. Everyone's heard of the giver's gain. Every, if you haven't read giver's gain, read it and use that as your philosophical Bible for the next six months and get back at me and let me know how your life looks. Yep. Here's on, here's what I do on to, to kind of mimic your giving, right? And finding a charity or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've had real good success at finding people instead of charities. Okay. So when we do this, I tell my employees, pick someone in your family that needs help. Pick someone in your, your sphere of friends that need help. And instead of giving to a food bank that every other guy gives to in the world, we're going to create something to do for them, the individual. Because here's what happens, in my opinion. That food bank's never going to say, you know what, Jonathan, thank you. I appreciate you. And then I'm telling all my friends about you. Yeah. They don't give a shit. That's true. If you give a check or you buy a refrigerator, I'll tell you the story, I won't mention names. Wife's friend calls, going through a nasty divorce. Refrigerator breaks, she's got a son living with her, juvenile. She's hurting financially. Yeah. Husband bounces on her after 20 years in the military and all that shit. He won't come replace the fucking refrigerator, bro. So my wife's on the phone, I hear it. I say, hey, get in the truck. We go to Home Depot, we get it for a refrigerator, we take it, we deliver it, we plug it in, we move all of our food in there, and I leave. Yep. No thought process, no nothing. What do you think that did for me? You I felt feel great good about myself. I feel good that I could give. I'm stacking karma chips in the bag to cash in later because that shit goes around. And the more you do those types of things for people unexpectedly with zero return expected, Money will show the fuck up in your world. Don't give a shit. I agree. It's a hundred percent guaranteed every single time. It will show back up tenfold in your world. That's in the Bible. I know a lot of yep. people probably don't read the Bible anymore, but that's still in the Bible, right? <laughs> yeah. The reality of that piece is the impact that you can have by a simple gesture. It's a thousand dollar refrigerator. I don't even think we spent a thousand, like seven hundred bucks. Yeah do that for a human that you have a, a, an association with and see the difference in how you feel and the kind of what comes back to you. Giving mm -hmm. to a food bank is cool. I get it. I love it. I think everyone yep. needs to eat dinner. I think our government fucks a lot of people over that are homeless and mm -hmm. sends money to other places that don't need it. We won't even get into that shit. Yeah. You need to hear that. Listen to Andy Frisella. He'll tell you all fucking about it. Uh, but I don't agree with all the money we're sending other countries when we got a bunch of people who serve this country fucking sleeping on the street corner, right? It's probably one of the things that I am most disgusted about anytime I see it. Yeah. And listen, the guys holding the signs up on the street corner, that's a business. That's not a homeless person. The true yeah. homeless people are the ones hiding because they're fucking ashamed to be homeless. Go yeah. find those people. Don't fucking put it on TikTok. Don't goddamn videotape yourself to get a bunch of views and shit. Don't do that. You, yeah. you capture karma chips in immediately when you do that, and they're fucking valueless. Yeah. Do it out of your heart and out of giving, because what you're getting from an emotional perspective and the money that you're getting from that emotional side of the world, because that too is income to me. If I feel good about what I'm doing, that's income. Of right? course. It may not be paper, but it's income and yeah. so when people do that in the video it, it discredits it right out of the gate for me like i see a bunch of these dudes making a bunch of money off of it on instagram and shit but the, the intent's not there yeah the pure intent's not there so this all comes back full circle and the same thing happens when you get up in the morning and you check in with you and you do something for you the same emotional income happens to where you can carry yourself through the rest of the day on that high mm-hmm talk to people better, you respect people better, you have better outcomes and conversations. Like that's where it starts from the planning. If you can't get yeah. that in order, who gives a shit about your business plan?
because the shit ain't going to work. I agree. Right? Because so you're leading it. Yeah, check in with yourself. Do the right things. Get your life in order. Get your health in order, your family in order, your fitness in order. The rest of the shit is a byproduct of those three things. I agree. And faith. I will, t- I will tell you this. I do believe you need to have faith in yourself and faith in whatever. Like, I'm Catholic. Right, I, I, str- I have strong feelings uh, uh, about God, and I will tell you that my faith is probably the only thing that's gotten me, and all these an- and fa- family faith and has gotten me through two of the biggest, biggest setbacks in my life, where I had no idea how I would get out. Okay, one investment into a shit gym franchise and one deal that went so sideways. And these are not like $10,000 mistakes. These are yeah. seven figure yeah, or debt. Can, 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 correct. Combined, it, the two were seven, fit, well over a million, right? right? And to the average person, that's probably when they're going to start um, chewing on their nine, right? Like, hey, let me see how this tastes. Oh, talk starting our block. Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah. It's yeah, it's very close. And my faith was what actually carried me to get through the first one. The second one, I'm still in process, but I know I will get through. And that is a winning formula, right? If you have all four of those covered. Plus, you have the right intent, and you're doing good for others without that expectation of getting anything in return. Those are the things that are going to propel you to help hit whatever goals you set yep. for the year, for the month, for the week, for your life, right? Yep. And, and in those moments, does your business plan matter? No. Right. So all that to be said is this, don't get caught in the, in the glitz and glamor and the lights of Las Vegas when you think business plan, business plan, business plan, business plan. Absolutely 100% it's important to understand where your ship is heading and mm-hmm. the milestones that you want to attract and, and cross as you're going through the year. But if you're unhealthy, you're stressed out, your fucking wife and kids hate you, you're you're smoking cigarettes and drinking to cope or smoking weed and all that to cope with your business like it's a fucking disaster waiting to blow up and you're not going to get through those evolutions of business bullshit that every entrepreneur has attacked and been through before the differentiator the separation is are you healthy is your headspace clear enough to continue grinding away to make the shit work out on the backside of the issue. 100%. You're not going to have one issue. You're going to have two <laughs> issues. You have one <laughs> issue. Okay. Yep. It's up to you to figure out how many of those you want to deal with. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, a lot of those issues stem from just you being a piss poor CEO and leader in your business. Because you're a piss poor daddy and husband at home because you don't have time. That's the biggest sentence I hear. Well, I want to do this, but I don't have time. Well, I want to do that, but I don't have time. Well, when your ass is dead, none of this shit fucking matters. And so you either can figure it the fuck out, get your ass out of bed a little earlier and find the time. Yep. Or stop planning for growth and better you because it's never going to happen. Period. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that that's your decision coin flip. You either do and act and change or you stay the same and stop be- Asking people for help because then, yep. then you're just a nuisance. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. You're an asshole. <laughs> Love it. So basically, our recap is don't be an asshole. No, don't I'm guys. Be an asshole. Or an asshole. Yeah. Don't or an asshole. <laughs> Get yourself Equally in order important. first. Right? Get yeah. yourself in order first. Subscribe to that. That is a lifelong journey, right? I mean, I woke up, uh, Brady McDonald, if you're listening to this, shout out to you. uh, I decided to run a marathon this year in 26 days, 24 days from now. 
I ran none. 2023, I did not run. Period. I ran four miles before Christmas and six miles Christmas Eve. And then my Achilles tendon were like, hey, bud, you haven't run all year, so you're not going to run for the next week and a half. We're going we're gonna to put you through hell. So yeah. I went and got dry needling this morning. I'm going to run. Now I'm not doing a full marathon on the 28th, but I'm going to do the half simply because I want to run a 100-mile race this year. Okay. I don't have a business goal this year. My physical fitness goal will carry into my business because guess what? When I show up at this fucking thing and I've accomplished a 13 and a half miles and then I come back, what do you think I'm going to do in business? I'm going to win. Crush it. I'm going to win. Because yeah. I'm winning in, in all the other aspects of life. So it's just inevitable that I win in business. So yep. win at home. I don't give a fuck about your company. Be the best husband and father or wife if you're listening, right? And mother. Mm-hmm. Win at home first. The winning will carry you forward to win at business and win in all the avenues of your life. I promise. Shit will go that way. So My don't drop. be an asshole and get your house in order. All right, guys. You heard it here. Share this with someone that needs to hear it. Everything we said is 100% accurate. Focus on you. The rest will follow. Thanks, guys. Take yeah. care.